Hello, and welcome to the Smart Injury Doctors Podcast, the injury market's top program for doctors, lawyers, and insurers who want to gain greater insight on how to improve patient recovery results and deliver better services in the U.S. injury market. Please welcome your host, Dr. Jeffrey Allen Kronk. Okay, doctors, what I want to talk about today is how do you explain the results of a CRMA or an excessive motion test to attorneys? Well, in the Smart Injury Doctors program, I have a program, the portion of the program is how to actually go out and speak to attorneys and talk to attorneys. And of course, in that program, we never talk about really a CRMA. We never talk about you know, we don't lead with, okay, here, let me show you what the CRMA is and what it does for you. Uh, because that's not how you're going to approach an attorney. So what you're, what you have to understand is you wouldn't run, you wouldn't run out and say, oh my gosh, um, look at this, look at this MRI report. Look at this MRI report. Look at what this MRI report does for you. Like you wouldn't even, who cares about the MRI report? You're going to talk about, look at how badly damaged this disc is. Look at how badly damaged this disc is. Well, how did you pick up the disc? We picked it up on an MRI. What's an MRI? Well, it's a magnet that basically um, is able to image things and it comes out in a report and a radiologist reads it. And the, the imaging bio, the, the imaging biomarker is the herniation and see this herniation. It can bulge. It can actually extrude. It can protrude. It can sequester. Uh, so that's what you talk about on an MRI. You don't talk about the report. You talk about the findings of the report. Um, Hey, I just, uh, I'm just talking to an attorney, right? The attorney just referred me over a, a, a patient, Mary. The attorney's name is Joe. Hey Joe, I just got Mary's, uh, test results back. She's got a major ligament injury. It qualifies for a spinal fusion surgery. It's a pretty serious injury. We're going to, we're going to be able to, I hope stabilize it without the need for surgery, but I just wanted to let you know that we just got testing results back and it was a pretty serious injury. That's how you explain it to an attorney. You explain the findings, you explain the effect of the findings on the patient with the attorney. That's, that's, that's how you explain it. You know, what are you looking to do when you're basically, you know, you're picking up an excessive motion test, right? So in your steps, right, as a provider, you're looking, you're doing this consult and you're going, Hey, what was the injury mechanism? What are the injury areas? Do I have them all listed? What are the injury symptoms? Do I have any preexisting conditions? Is there gaps in care I need to contend with? And what is the effect that this injury or this condition is having on the patient's life? You're going to take a patient over into an exam. You're going to do palpation, range of motion, orthopedic testing, neurological testing, strength testing, pain level testing. You might do cognitive testing. You're going to do all of those tests right? And what are you looking for? You're looking for the effect of the injury. Now you're going to image the injury because remember injuries are derangements of body parts. You can't, without imaging, you can't see the derangement of the body part. And there's only three derangements of body parts that you're looking for in the spine, fractures, excessive motion, and disc herniations. Because there's only two tissues to a spine, bone and connective tissue. So your first line of imaging is x-ray. It's your most powerful test. And when you minimize this test, you minimize yourself, you minimize your condition, you minimize your expertise, you minimize, you should get paid less. If you want to minimize this condition, you should get paid less. You should stop complaining about reimbursement issues. You should stop complaining about the fact that you're not, you're getting excluded from programs. You're getting excluded from insurance reimbursement. You should stop complaining about all of that because what the imaging does, the x-ray imaging does is it picks up the main condition. And if you're going to minimize that, then minimize yourself away because the x-ray gives you the first indication, whether you got a fracture, whether you got a disease, whether you got an infection. Now it's not the greatest test for those things. Fracture it is, but disease and infection is pretty far along before you're going to see the effects on the bone. It's going to determine if you've got ligament damage. Ligament damage is excessive motion. It's going to determine that the where and how bad there is spinal instability. It's going to allow you to grade the sprain. It's going to allow you to determine if you've got a surgical level of injury. It's going to allow you to determine if you have an impairment and what level. 
It's going to allow you to determine if you need activity restrictions right away, where the facet, the most facet injury is. It allows you to pick up the cervical profile in the mild traumatic brain injury type scenario. It allows you to better establish and make better referrals in for MRIs to establish if there's a disc injury. And it certainly supports all of the care that you could ever need. Now, if you have a fracture, you're going to send out for the CT. If you think you have a disc herniation, you're going to send out for the MRI. But there's nothing that drives more clinical information and more clinical decisions and supports more clinical everything than your simple x-ray study. And as soon as you minimize that condition, again, you're just minimizing yourself. And if, again, if you want to do that, it's totally fine. You, you're, you have every right to do that. Just don't complain about things like reimbursement rates. And so when you're explaining to an attorney what this means, it, you explain what a grade two or grade three sprain injury. It's a serious ligament injury. This test picks it up and substantiates serious ligament injury. This test picks up the fact that the person is qualified for surgery. This test picks up the fact that I need to activity restrict the patient. This, this test picks up the fact that it, this patient has this level of a permanent injury and, and there's an impairment that comes with it. This test picks up the fact that the patient has a probable disc herniation. This pick, test justifies the fact that the herniation is not a pre-existing condition and was caused by the accident. That's how you explain it to the attorneys. Now, if you don't know how to do that, that's what the Smart Injury Doctors Program is for. Because most doctors don't know how to do it. And when they don't know how to do what I just said to do, it's costing you a fortune. It's costing you a fortune. It's costing you a fortune in reimbursement. It's costing you a fortune in relationships. It's costing you a fortune in referrals. It's costing you a fortune. And so you should be able to relate exactly what the, not the report itself, but the findings, what the findings mean in the report to the attorneys. That's all they care about. That's all anybody cares about. Right. I don't I don't need you. To, you know, if you're just going to sit there and think that I know exactly what a disc herniation is or what a disc herniation that's pressuring the nerve means and how that's different. No, you have to educate the attorney. And this is no different. You have to educate the attorney. But that's the biggest opportunity that there is, is educating that attorney, because when you can educate that attorney simply like a third grader. You want to speak to them, not because they have the not not to invalidate them. But that's about the communication level that really communicates. If you can communicate it to a third grader and the third grader gets it, you are going to be lethal in the market. But when you, what, what a lot of doctors do is they don't know. So they, they, they stand behind really complicated explanations that nobody understands and think that that's going to communicate and it doesn't. You want to stay incredibly simple with your explanations. Because remember, these people are not trained. They don't even know the anatomy. A lot of attorneys don't even know what a ligament is. They don't know the difference between a ligament and a tendon. And so when you're talking to them, if you're going 400 level, I'm sorry, it's not going to work. If you're going elementary school, it's going to work. But you have to know that level. You have to be that good with your explanation. And again, if you're not that good with your explanations, trust me, it is costing you a fortune and that fortune being able to, and that's what, like I said, what the whole smart injury doctors program is for is to take complicated subjects and simplify them, make it simple. So people understand what it is that you're doing and what makes you so unique. Cause when they understand they can contribute when they understand they can, they can make decisions, they can get involved with you, you know, uh, it just, it, 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 it's how you're communicating it. So you want to explain what the findings mean. You're not going to go out. Oh my gosh, look at this new CRMA. I got the CRMA. It's brand new and it shows ligament damage. <laughs> they're going to, they're going to go, okay, I, I don't really give a damn. I don't know what it is. I just don't want it. I don't even want to pay for it. And that's the response you're going to get. Right. So if I go and I say, hey, John, Mary has a surgical level of ligament damage and it's going to take us probably a while to stabilize this, but we're starting the stabilization treatment now. 
And there's a good chance we have a good history of great results with this particular condition. But I just wanted you to let you know that it's that level of injury. And I'm probably going to need to send the patient out for an MRI to see if I got complicating factors. Just wanted you to know more about it. Trust me. What I just said will communicate to every, com every yeah. attorney in the country. Every attorney in the country. But how you say it, I've, I've listened. I've, I've listened to you, doctors. And you say it, you're very complicated. Uh, with your understanding of it and I have enough experience in the market now that when I hear that I know that the doctor doesn't fully understand it because you're not able to simplify it when you really understand something you can make it so damn simple again a third grader can understand it and that's where you want to be so that's my advice to you if you have interest in the smart injury doctors program you just look us up www.smartinjurydoctors.com Doctors, always short, sweet, and to the point. I appreciate what you do in the market, especially those of you that can get great results with these injuries. Keep going. You should be the highest paid doctors in the injury market today, bar none. You're the most important doctors in the that the spinal injury is the first, fourth, and sixth leading cause of chronic pain and disability, and you're seriously denting those statistics, and I appreciate what you do. So thank you very much. I look forward to presenting more content to you on the next podcast. You've been listening to the Smart Injury Doctors Podcast, the number one audio production show for professionals in the U.S. injury market that want to deliver better injury services to the patients, clients, or insureds they serve. If you like what you heard today, please leave us a review and don't forget to join us on our next program.